problem with the assignment, reply with yes, and the date that you think you'll have it resolved. If you don't have reply with no, and the date that you think you'll submit. So just do that in the chat to confirm that you can hear me. Yeah, like let's do it for two, three minutes, then, uh, then we can get started. Uh, today we are completing on the final process of building the model, but I will start from scratch where we will together build a model from scratch step by step, explaining each step, whatever it does, what code we have. Yeah. And also before then, I think there are some concepts that I wanted us to go through in SQL. Uh, I understand most of you have been doing, uh, according to the knowledge that you have or what you have covered, you are doing a lot of challenges in SQL. And yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about the five advanced like concepts that you should know despite the here. So yeah. No, Monday at least. Then we have Daniel. Please document all the quick reassignment in one and a link and link submission link. Some of us are lost. Okay, sure. We will do that. Um, Daniel, I'm free also has no problem. They will submit on Monday. So we'll share the link to tomorrow for submission. Okay. There are a few things that I wanted you to go through, and I think that's what I will start with. Uh, hopefully that everyone can hear me. If you can't hear, reply with a no. If also you have problem with my audio, like the voice is fluctuating or I have problems with the audio, please rip. technical issues, please reply with a no, with a yes, sorry. And if you can hear me, reply with a yes. So please confirm in the chat if you can hear me so that you get started. Great, so, um, okay, if my audience is clear and everyone can hear me, I wanted us to take a detour to something that we have done earlier, but now we are looking at the advanced concept. We have looked at select, we have looked at uh, insert, we have looked at how you can create like uh, a query to select and remove like values or differentiate the values. You can remember the example that I gave you. Hopefully that I'm sharing my screen. Someone can unmute and confirm when they can see it. Uh, hopefully that you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, so I was talking about the example that you did earlier and I left you to go and look at it. Uh, I'll move to desktop. And then after moving to desktop, I'll make directory called demos. Then I'll move to demo and touch something like example.sql. So I'll open my work on a text editor. And then, uh, yeah, even it's this one. So we end the example here. You remember when I talked about like these currencies, how you can convert them into an aggregate, like how can you even separate? Another example is the one that someone was asking when you meet like you have like three two adult CC and they come in BS Audi. Uh, let's talk about a six, something like that. No, this is the this is the main and model. This is the cost power as H. Then this is the make of the car, something like this. Then you can say this is the model, like which here. Just giving an example. Uh -huh. Now, 
you're supposed to analyze this data and then you meet like you have to add in CC. And if you wanted to get sum with CC here, you can't be able to like get the sum. So how do you separate it from the other so that you can be able to analyze everything? So that's just an example. Another one is this one for cash. How do you remove the commas or how do you remove even the KS or the dollar cents that we have and be able to analyze the data? So those are the some of the things that I expect you can do by now. But here comes now the most like we are talking about the take the advanced concept that you have to look at. I'm not pressuring you to go and look at this thing by today or tomorrow or next month. It's something that you keep learning. So just don't pressure yourself like you have to understand everything by today. So just give it time. But at least I thought we should have mentioned, we should have mentioned it so that you can go and look at it. If I give you any option like, uh, okay, there is someone who talked about the analytical engineer hello we can look at one okay we can one that i know is hiring is right for the credits and yeah they are hiring for the analytical law you meet like they won't even if it's a junior law they will ask you to have like advanced concepts yeah this is the analytics junior then we have the junior here sorry uh, okay you meet it's a junior law, one year experience, but they need you to have understood like the advanced skill. So that is why I'm emphasizing on it. Okay, I intend to show you before I go on and talk rumors. Yeah, you see, this is that a junior law, but you need to have mastered like the advanced skill concepts. That is why I thought it is important for me to mention these things. And the first one is common table expressions. CTE, they are called also with. Uh, the other one is low number, lank and dense. The other one is case when, then your extraction of data, and also we have self joins. So these are things that, this is the syntax for uh, with queries, they are also called CTE, common table expressions. Then we also have the low number, the lank, and the dense lank. So something else that you can see how it's applying. And the last one is case when. And also finally, we have the extract. Something else that I wanted to ask, and I will just ask, is there anyone who knows the order by which the SQL statements are executed? Place your hand. Hey, if you know that and you have not Googled, you might you should get something. Do you know the order by which SQL yeah, Humphrey gone? Okay, thank you. The first the first clause to be executed is the from where the, the table where the the data is. Then if there's a join, that it will be executed next. That is if you are joining with another table, so that you the the constraints, the conditions. That is, for example, the where, where is executed next. After where, you go the. I think it's the select, and then you order, and limit. Sorry, I forgot the having. Having is is executed after after the select. Thank you. No one differing with him. He might or might not be long. Okay, thank you, Alfred. I think you're late. And this is the order by which uh, the SQL statements are executed. So if you need to master this, at least you can take this one as a screenshot. Uh, also, another question that I think you might get, which is important. How do you optimize your SQL queries? That one I had asked in the class. This is the order. So if you're taking a screenshot, to please do. Uh, important. Sometimes you might meet it as a question. And the other part is on um, how to optimize your queries. Yeah. How do you do that? Sorry? Someone is talking. Okay, someone else can raise their hand. Hopefully, you can lower yours now. 
You have answered one. Uh, yeah, Daniel, you addressed your hand, so go on. Okay, some of the few ways you can optimize your queries, for example, is like, um, for example, when selecting, only select the columns that you need instead of maybe selecting star. That means selecting everything. Because um, when you only select the column that you need, at least you reduce the size of the data. You can also use things like the, the limit keyword, like uh, to, re to limit the number of rows that you are, you are looking for. And um, other ways of improving performance now on a database level, you can do things like uh, clustering and partitioning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Also, I shared some in the in the channel. I don't know if you saw them, but I can pin the text so that you can be able to see it. Yeah, so basically that's what I wanted us to talk about. Something else that I wanted to talk about is Docker. And this is the Docker official documentation. So this is what I'm going to share. Please, by Monday, I'm limiting this by Monday. Make sure that you have installed Docker. Please come with Docker installed. And then step by step, go at least through these 10 tutorials. Like from the overview, from the containerized app. This is a very, like, if you spend like one hour on this tutorial, you'll have mastered everything. And then remember to go with a pen and a paper. I want you to re respond with the out, like the result of what you, you learned by Monday. So just create one hour, even if it's after the call, even if it's tomorrow before after church or anything else, please try to create time, go through this tutorial. I want to know that you can create a project and localize, like you know how to localize your project to make things easier. Anyone with a problem with that? Who needs an extension past Monday? Respond in the group before I go now to the project that you're doing today. Anyone who wants an extension about Docker, it's simple. You are going through Docker, you get, get Docker, you look at the installation, then you come from the overview of Docker is, what containers are, then you move to containerizing your app creating your Docker file and outrun a Docker image, and also how to work with Docker Compose so that you can use Docker Compose app to run your application. Then how do you update your application that was Dockerized? Yeah. How do you list number of images that you have? How do you list number of Docker uh, containers that you have? Yeah. Uh, something else like if it's here, yeah, let me go back. What is this three added mapping to three added port? Three added means what is the purpose of get? If I was running an image and you saw this dollar, this period sign at the end, it's not a full stop. Okay, you can call it full stop, but you, okay, later like you should call it a period sign. What it does, you can also tell me what the i uh iphone t for tag means in this case and getting started. Is it Docker? Is it an image name or a container name? Yeah, I find DP what it means and etc. etc. All the way until what next? Just go through everything. I think here at what next you learn about how to how to do orchestration on your containers, and you can go through that for now. Is there a problem with that? If you have a problem and you need extension past Monday, type yes. If you are, we are clear that you will do it, type no. You don't need an extension in the chat so that you get started. Please, this is what is holding us. So, uh, I downloaded web docker, but it only worked once since I haven't opened it. It can't start. What might be the problem? So sometimes when you start, make sure that you have started your doc. You have installed also Docker Demion. Is it called Docker? Docker Demion. Yeah. Uh, Demion. 
Yeah. So you have to install this and also to learn it before you start the account. Yeah. Yeah, this is the installation that you have to do if you're using Ubuntu, if you're using other system, please follow the setup for Windows and others. Make sure that you have Docker desktop, it runs as Docker demo, and then you can start it before you start working with Docker in your terminal. Uh, silence means we are good. So everyone will submit by Monday. Yeah, let's get started with the work now. So. What I wanted us to do is to create a project together where we will collect data together, analyze it together, and be able like to transform it and build a model with it. It might take us like one hour to do that, but basically, in for production or project that needs more attention, might take more than what we were using here. So, uh, for example. Uh -huh. You'll be working on a simple project and you're trying to like research or investigate if there is a relationship between humidity and temperature. And can you predict that? Uh, also, you'll try to look at what uh, if there is also, a, you know, what apparent temperature means. I think you have to go and look at that. Yeah, so basically that's it. And we are trying to use data from Cargo. So you go to Cargo and download data. So you can come here. Uh, and basically for this project, so let me open Jupyter Notebook. A control alternative T, then uh, I can come here. Conda, activate. Then I can move to desktop. And I can create a folder called project and I can move to project. And after moving to project, I can open Jupyter. Hey, we can see your screen. Oh, God. Sorry. What about now? It's visible. Was you seeing the screen when I was talking about this tutorial? No. Oh God, I have to repeat. Uh, I shared this link on how to get Docker and I shared it. So this is the first tutorial that I needed you to go and look at, get Docker. So go and download Docker for your operating system here. And then after that, move through this tutorial. So we have the get started tutorial here from the overview. So the overview, learn what Docker is, everything, everything, go to how to containerize your application. And yeah, how to work with Docker file and how to work with Docker compose file and how to list things like containers that you have in your like the containers that you have, how to get the container ID. If you want to stop an ID, how can you use the Docker ID to stop the ID? What is the purpose of this period that is here that looks like a full stop? What also is getting started for this case? This is the this is how we build the Docker container and build is the command that we use. Ifn T for tag, getting started is the container name and hyphen p indicates the like the directory where the folder is then go through the whole tutorial everything everything until the last part where is how you learn how to orchestrate your container so yeah i think i've shown that and you have to get started here please make sure that you have done that go through everything and be able to share what you have learned or the summary of what you have learned in like 50 words by Monday. Is that possible? Anyone with a problem about that? If you have a problem and you need extension, maybe to Tuesday or another day, reply with a yes, you have a problem in the chat. Otherwise, I'll continue. So, and said, uh, you can see my screen. Is the font okay? Or I can increase the font. 
also again i understand like this font is small and i'm sorry about that so you come here uh open another terminal and yeah control alternative t for terminal and then i can enlarge it okay uh, i hope you can see it Yes, okay. Okay, good. So we come here and start like building a project. So I'd say you move to desktop. And after moving to desktop, oh, we start by activating Conda. So Conda activates and then you move to desktop. And then we create a folder called uh, huh. okay. Now I think it's more visible and then the IR for make directory, then we create something that is called um Docker make desktop, you can call it up, and then we can move to up and after moving to up we can start jupyter notebook from a jupyter lab and we can open it it will open uh you can use these signs to attach like more than one more than one command if you are in a hurry then you click on python and i increase the fonts to make sure that everyone can see uh, so basically that it. And this is, um, I will name it to what you're trying to create today. So basically what you try to do today is a simple project on how to investigate if or whether uh, there is a relationship between humidity and temperature. And we'll be using, and we'll be using for that case, <coughs> data set that is available on Kagu, it's called Z uh, data set 2006 to 2016 with that data set. So we're trying to investigate whether there is a relationship. You made the key versus them. So that's what you're trying to do. So basically, we start with the whole process and we are trying to investigate is if is there. Uh, relationship between between uh, humidity and temperature and temper temperature. So this is what we're trying to investigate. Uh, is the problem I can use it as markdown and problem statement. This is the first thing that you do. You understand the question that you ask and which data should be could be used for that case. Then you go and look for data. I can run this. Then you go to the second part. The first stage and look for the data and here i've said you'll be using data set that is available on cargo and it is called weather i will just show you right now and give you the link the data set is called weather data so when looking for data you do one thing you move and look at different sources of data and look at data that looks the same as the one that you wanted to work with for that case. <coughs> it is 2006 to 2016. I hope the record was not updated. So we are looking at this data set on Kago. So those are the first step that you do. And if I look at that data here, I might get the data. Data set 
on Kaggle. Right. So, ah, uh, not this one. This is analyzed. Okay, I'll come back to that. So that is the first two steps. But now you have our, pro our own way of doing project. Uh, this is my advice to you. We have learned about how you can accomplish, like, how can, can you do a project? So that is one thing. But something else that I would like you to do is like, go and try to come up with your own way of doing projects. Like, how do you accomplish something if I tend to do? Like if I was given a problem, which is the framework that I should use to solve the problem. If you come with your own, you'll have understood and even you can tell even if someone is interviewing you, this is what I was taught, but this is what I usually use to solve my problems. And it will be impressive. Like this guy knows what he is doing. So I tend to talk about the stages that you take for at least for the first project. And what you'll be trying to do is to collect the data or define the pro problem definition, then we gather the data. Then after gathering the data, we move to the other step where you're trying to do what? We will try to build the model and make sure that the, if the data is clean, we can move on. The other things that I might mention, including dimension reduction with PCA, principal component analysis, and also we might talk about regression and accuracy measure and evaluation. So those are the things that you look at for the first step. Then also I wanted us to look at the car prediction. Uh -huh. This isn't, and for the car, that must be very simple. Uh, okay, just a second. That is the first part, but we have the second part of building the model where you talk about a different model. So I don't know between the two which we should start with. Uh, also, there is one for car, so I might open a new file. No. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, we can start two files and also talk about uh, if you want them to predict the, the car, but we have the car data set that is available that we'll be using again on cargo so we have cargo uh, data set on cargo oh uh, yeah this is like 11 kb not so huge okay let me try to be perfect here so that you can use uh, Yeah, so basically I can get that from here. Just a second. Uh, okay, we have it here. Cargo car data set. Yeah, I wanted my data set like this one. Hopefully you can see my, my screen. And this is the data set that I wanted us to use for this project. Again, one thing why I usually, I can encourage you to use cargo like before even you move on you can go here and try to use either of these models that you have here like the problem was solved using like different um model like for us we won't be using xg boost but i know it has a high um what is it called it has high chances of giving the most accurate prediction or high accuracy you can also see that they trying to do the hede 
year and you can go through the whole process of cleaning the data and performing exploratory data analysis to the last stage. Yeah, to the last step. So yeah, I think I'll share this so that you move faster and I don't have to talk about ED in the process. Okay, yeah. All of the, as I share this, you can just unmute and tell us what you want, like the extension or anything that you want done. Dolo the Kyongo. Please. Or you can just type as I go on, if you're not comfortable talking. Uh, so the data set is here, we can download the data set. Oh God. I think to download the data set, I have to log in. But let's see. I just have to sign in because I have an account and yeah, I can now download it. And I can see the archived file here. I can double click on it to extract whatever it's in. And then I can copy it and move it to the folder that you're working with. Uh, if you're working with up and I paste your... Okay, it didn't... Uh, just give me a second. I extract it first. Extract, then I have to define the location for extraction. Home, desktop, app. Boom, extract. The successful cross, cross. Move to home for confirmation. You can just come here. I can add a new and list. You can see car CSV was created. Good. This is the data set that you'll be using. So, yep. Uh, let me see if she has typed something. Okay, yeah, there are different options. You can try to solve the problem here on Cargo, but I don't like working on Cargo. Actually, if you look at my account, it's very inactive. So, yeah, I prefer using local repository than pushing the code. Uh, and I'm not saying you can't be able to do the same. You can be able to write your code on Cargo and push the code in GitHub. Uh, yeah. Maybe if I can show you something, let me come here. New notebook. Uh, okay. You can call it uh, yeah. APs and everything that you need to do. Then you can start. If you wanted line of code, you can import anything that you want. But uh, yeah, you can solve your problem here, yeah? especially if you're working as a team. Because now, if I have this, I can be able to share with collaborators. I can make it public or private, and I can share collaborators like I made room for someone that I know. Let me look at uh, you can add someone that you want. It's very simple. So if you're working like three of you and you want to do it, you can do it there. And at the end you can share with people, other people. You can add collaborators like let's say Mike, let's say Andrew. And at the end, and everyone that makes a contribution, like if I make a contribution here, someone else will come and do, and then at the end you'll see. We will have seen the, what is it called? The changes. I will see the changes that were made. And then it's possible. Kago, make sure that you want to riff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Send to riff. Yeah. So try to work with that. Then again, whenever you have a machine learning problem, try to get something that is called pre-trained. Like, let's say I wanted to do a fake news prediction. I might ask, is the pre-trained fake news 
prediction models and then this helps you to to simplify the work yeah <clears throat> like you can use these models instead of writing yours from scratch but again knowing how to write yours from scratch is an added advantage i'm showing you how to work with jupyter notebook i don't like it uh doesn't mean you should not like it it's a good thing and it can help you a lot especially if you're working as a team and you want a one source of like code where you can all contribute uh basically that's done any other question that you have uh hadro i hope that was clear and they haven't trust in one so far and again this this like that approach is important in uh, like whenever you are con this <coughs> uh if you have a laptop that is, is not as powerful as you wanted and that takes more time you can use that approach if you have a macbook m2 i saw people with it here you can just i'm not the data locally i think it's the best approach i'm not saying you should not use any other approach that is there so i'll go on with jupyter notebook i have gotten the data so Basically, you start building the model, like how do you approach it? We have already data, like we know our data, we have collected our data. But again, I'll mention this, if the data was not like this is, this can't be a, like a work thing because now you're using data that is publicly available. Like it's a cargo data set that you're using. Other sources of data set, you can use UCI, University of California, Machine Learning Repository, you can use St. Hawkins, they have a so, uh, GitHub repo that contains data. You can use the dummy data that comes with all toy data that comes with the Scalan or um, Seaborn. You can also try to look at the, what is it called? Open data the other source of data for everything and any other source that you think you can use or you can scrap data on your own and try to use it for example if you want to see a certain place of uh, an object or uh, an item on jumia you can just scrap the data and try to get the result so far so good so let me move to the next step we have worked with cars and uh okay yeah uh here you try to import the necessary packages first then you move to the whole process i hope it won't take more time okay i hope it won't take a lot of time because now yeah so you start by importing like uh for me i like using py forest so i was just say to make sure that it is installed be install UI for lists, and then I learn it to install for me. If it installed, it will tell me. Then I will have all the packages that I need imported. But there are two things that I have to do to make sure that all my visualization comes in one page. I'll say matplotlib. Inline make sure that every visualization that I do comes at the bottom. Then I can set the color for Zibon dot set. Then you can set color to something like underscore code to be true so that they can be able to use the Zibon color scheme. Okay, that's the first step. Good. Okay, was it available? It will, you see then we come to the other step here and we try to now read the data so you know our data is in pdf format p or a csv file or csv file format so you can call data frame here or data is equals to pd for pandas pandas was imported by, automatically by py forest dot read then underscore csv and then from there we can come and try to indicate the name of the car like the data csv file that is cars underscore dot csv 
Okay, we can do the basic minimum, like trying to look if our data was imported, but I will just run this and then come here. <coughs> df.end and help me to look at the first five. Uh, df dot tail can help me to look at the last five, just trying to get the nature. But since I am not looking at getting more data, I will just remit it to two. Then I may want to know the number of laws and columns that we have. So df dot shape will help me with that. And lastly, I might try to get the descriptive statistics that what gives me pd data dot describe what's wrong with my code just asking someone what's wrong with my code someone can unmute let me know what's wrong with my code before i move on i can see like four errors Wait, can you hear me first? Even before I go on. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Yeah, thank you. I can see the hellers in the chat. I didn't do one thing here. The first one is at import. Okay, sorry. I have to import UI forest now. Uh, the installation is taking long. I think I might eliminate this here. Escape DD to delete. Remember to use shortcuts. And then I might come here, 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 here. Conda deactivate. Oh, conda activate. And then I say pip pip install py forests. As someone said, okay, uh, downloading, building, stored. Successively installed PY forest. Uh, so let me run this and see. Boom. 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 I want to know why it's. Why could it be executing? Okay, I just do this. Come here, copy this, and then paste it here and try to run it. Yes, I want to end it. I shut down the kernel and restarted it again. Jupyter notebook for this case. Yep, so I'll just come to untitled the one that was used. So, Viola. Jesus. Okay, okay. Every day you get new LS every day. So I just come here, close it. Yeah. Let me start Jupiter. Jupiter Lab. I think there is a compatibility issue that I haven't checked. Switch to workspace. Oh, good. And open this. So I just close it. I leave it. Come here. Try to check. Switch. Okay, just close it, restart it, control C. Good, so yeah, you select. 
So you can start a new one and I can call it simple. And what works? So I come and import. I wonder why my kernel is busy. That is giving the each each. So let me do something here. Yeah? I'll just close this. I leave, yeah. Then I come here and make sure that there is, yeah, it's not working. Uh, okay. And close this and I can come here. Uh, the installation, assuming that it was complete. And then we close this one, close the terminal. I come here. Uh, send it back and send it to up and then ULS and you can Jupyter lab. Yeah, I select, I open. X is equals to 10. And X is us. Okay, oh, I wonder what would be wrong. I don't know, sales. Okay, I know, sales. And I do. Okay. Now I have to use the what I said I don't like using. Too bad. Okay, let me come here and install py forest. Install. I hope you can see. Okay, I don't know why my kernel is acting up py forest. And I run the code. You start the session and install. And after the installation is complete, you start writing the code as you had written earlier. So you start by import py forest and then from there we read the data uh, okay uh, we read the data so the installation was successful so i think the importation also should be right and then from there we come here We come here and read the data. So data is equals to a dot read as well CSV. Then you paste the type here and the data. So I didn't have to misbehave. Okay, that is not how you read it. So yeah, I just check something. L on ago. We are trying to read the cargo data set using PADOS. Okay. Uh, hard one. Yeah. Uh, in the PD dot read csv you provide the like the path to the what is it called to the source of the like where the data set is yeah i've seen that i think it's something like that thank you no such directory okay you can see the file name is cargo input then the car.csv Okay, and instead of wasting more time, I think I'll just come here, look at the code, and look at how this guy had this data. Okay, you come here, he important the packages, then how did he read the data? Oh yeah, there is one path I didn't include, that is cars. 
I think we should specify cars. So, can you maybe click on the input? See Sorry? where there's data. Uh, you know, like if you go back to your notebook. Yep. Well, it's a set to it. It's, uh, it needed to be. Mm. Yeah, it was missing this oh, part. That's, that's a really nice part. Has a shot. Oh, okay. That's a half decent try. Yeah, uh, thank you. So you have our data, and then you can move next. You can try to see data dot end. There is someone who is unmuted. I don't know who is it. It is. Yeah, we can look at the first five, the first two, and we look at the output. Here you see how the car uh, hard. Then you can move to the next step and we can look at something like data dot still. Uh, uh, you can also look at the last two. You can see the data as like 427 uh, lows and then it is like, if I want them to see the number of lows and column, I'll just say data dot uh, shape. And I will get that it has 428 lows and 15 columns. Remember that in machine learning, we won't be using all these columns, so we'll be dropping some and remain with the most relevant one. So from there, I might also want to do what? I might also want to look at the descriptive statistics. So I'll say data dot describe. Describe function and I look at it. Sorry. I should have seen it. Yeah, so here I get the basic, like the mean, the basic explanation or the basic descriptive statistics of data and everything is there. Okay, so those are the basic things that you should look at when you're looking at your data. Again, remember that I'm using matplotlib. Um, I can use anything that I want, but I'm only using one line of code to import. Then I read the data. Remember to specify the path. Again, you don't have to struggle. You can look at what others have done because you have like nine, nine uh, projects that were done. So yes, I think something else that we can work on is now try to look at columns that make sense to us and columns that doesn't make sense to us like we don't need all columns for our prediction we just take them uh, we just take them the ones that make sense or the ones that we are using for our project and for that case here uh, okay we have to remove the columns like that okay there is some columns that won't help us make sense one of them is the model, the model of the car. And like, is it Volvo? Like, we don't have to work with the model. We also don't have to work with the drivetrain. And also something else that I can remove is the invoice. I don't want to know how much it costs. And also I can remove the type of the car. I think, yeah. Uh, basically, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. So how do you remove that data set? So you have to drop the column and you use df.drop column. And again, here you can check like, uh, what is it called, what is it called? You can check the missing value. There is this column. Yeah. Let's check missing values after we drop so we drop the columns that you don't want to use. So data, our new data should be data.drop is the function that we use. Then we pass the columns that you don't want to use. So for example, I said we don't need model. Uh, something else that I think I don't need to build a machine learning model here is driven train, drive train model column. Uh, I think I don't also need type. Referencing from here. I don't need type. 
Uh, country of origin is important, but I think I can remove type. Okay. Yeah. Let me do something here. Data. Data dot columns. Yeah, here is the columns that we have that I think might help us or not help us. Then we can also remove type. Uh, I also think invoice is not important for me here. Yeah. Uh, what else is not important? Uh, I need model, drive train. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's work with the other columns, I think. It's just a simple uh -huh. thing. Yeah? Before you drop, just following on your advice, do you want to create a copy of the data? I want to create a copy of the same data. Yeah. You can, okay, this is how I'm trying to create a new data, but the new copy of data, let me show you when I do it, take data. Uh, wait, where is the typo? Try try to other space. It doesn't. Invoice. It doesn't. Okay, invoice capital. Yeah. Invoice. yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Train then invoice I. Okay, there is an error. Mm -hmm. And then this end it was working. So Oh God, not found in axis. Uh, <laughs> we have make, we have model, which is correct. We have dry. Okay, starting from the model. Okay, drop. That is the correct syntax of drop. Oh, good. Maybe access equals columns or something. So I think this should work. There should be a comma before access. There is syntax error. Okay, oh, good. Uh -huh. Yeah, we should have separated this because they are two. And also, you can also remove origin. I don't think it will be important for me. Yeah. Then I can say data dot uh, columns now. and I can run it. Look at the difference. We have the same data frame. I didn't want to, think to introduce a new data frame. I just had the same data frame and with different columns. The first one had model, which I have removed. It had drive train, which I've removed. It had also the invoice and origin, which I've removed because they don't make sense to my project. And again, I want to be look at the type of data that I had previously. Uh, okay, columns, it's important. Then I can introduce a new column and say data dot and and then I can be left with the first row. 
you can see I've been left with numeric data that can help me make or broader. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, and when, okay, yeah, it has already created the instance. So the new data that I'm left with is numeric compared to the one that we had here. It had developed and everything. So I'm removing all this that has cut, like, what is it called? That contains um, categorical data. So since I have this data, I can be able now to build my model because now these are data that I can use. Otherwise, if you under troll, yes, you'd be uh, like, you'd compute it to make sure that something like yes means one and no means zero or true and false. You just assign a, a numeric value to represent either of the two. The same way when it works with male and female, sometimes you can do that to be able to make sure that the data can be used in the model. Then from there, uh, from there now, I think we can be able to predict the price of the car now because you have the some like numeric data that can help us build the model. So we start now determining which model will work best for us. We have different types of models that would work and give us different results of accuracy. And we'll try to use either of them to get the result. And then we'll compare the output to make sure that we have like a final result. And for this case, I think some of the important models that can work for us is <coughs> We can try to use um, linear regression. It can work for this case. And also Ladon Forest can work. We also have another model that we can fit our data and see how it works. That is the last one. I don't know who knows the meaning, but it means like least absolute shrinkage and selection operation. Operator, sorry. So we can try to work with the least two model. We can implement two and see how it works. We can compare the uh, accuracy and also like try to predict. Like when you have like two or three models or more, then what you do, <coughs> you try to take one that is more accurate. So for this case, I will start simple and I will try to use linear regression. I want to implement linear regression first, then I will implement random forest regression, and then I will do an implementation of uh, <coughs> lasso. Then we can compare the three output and try to see which one can we use. So we need to import a few packages from a scaler. I can either in introduce them here, but since this is a learning project, I can just introduce them here, but don't do it when you're learning. So I have to import a few things. So from SK, run. I can import. Let me copy this command because I will use it multiple times. The first thing that I need is linear model. Linear model. I also need like split and and test spread from the same uh, scaler. And it has a package that is called model underscore selection. Imports. We have train and test spread. Uh, let's say we import the others at the end when you want to use them. Okay. And typo here. And then we can, I just want them to split the data that we have. That is why you see I've just imported what's necessary for that case. Uh, we can define our X and Y. So we can see our Y from here. Where is that column? Here. We can use this as our x. Oh, oh, OK, as our y, then we can use the rest as our x. Remember, we used to say in high school, y is equals to mx plus z. So 
our constant is not defined here and our gradient is not of importance. So if we remove, okay, let me include M here for a gradient, that is what we left. So we are using X, which is the other columns to predict the, the price of the car. That's what you're doing. We are using the other columns to predict this. And to do that, I have to define my Y and X. And something else that I want us to use, when, if you remember very well, we had X, the equation was written in Y is equals to MX plus C. To confirm so that we cannot be lying. <coughs> Uh, most of the times you advise to use X. Okay, it's something that will work even if you use a different thing. So I like using my X as a uppercase letter and my Y. Uh, my Y as a small case letter. So yeah, here we have here we have our X. So I need the old data apart from one column for that case. So I need the old data, the old data frame that we have but only one column won't make sense to me. So I will just drop everything and be left with, I will drop that column and be left with everything and call it my X. So I'll say data dot drop using the drop column here and or the drop method here. And then we, what are we dropping? We're dropping this column, the price of the car. And we come here, uh, we give it the axis to be one. So yeah, good. We have our X. What about our Y? Our Y is only one column that we have, which is here. And if I learn this, uh, using df and then we can try to you look at x it is everything apart from one column and our y is everything apart from it's just the places to be simple so we have our x and y now let's uh okay Excuse. Is there someone with a question? Yes, yes, I have a question. Yeah, go on. Okay. Concerning the the Y, that data frame. Can you kindly confirm okay, it has the dollar signs? Is it that in Python does it recognize that it as numeric or integer? It is just the currency. So even when it's predicting the price of the car, it will just indicate dollar something. Make sense? Okay, thank you. We can remove it if you want. We can work with it the way it is for that case. Uh, you remember when you are working with Viscala and, uh, okay, the IDS data set? Uh, why it doesn't matter? Because that is the value that we want predicted, okay? So I want I want to just move to this other part where you try now to fit our model. And I said we can use linear regression first, yeah. So to use linear regression, I have to go back and import a few things. I have to import linear regression from uh, linear model. So I imported linear model somewhere. So I will say from scalar. Uh-huh linear. I hope you remember me importing this the, this part linear uh, underscore model. Okay. We import. Uh, what are we importing? We import linear regression. Good, and if we learn it, it should execute and we introduce a new column here and go and now create 
our model. So we have to come down and implement our model. So you just define your model. Uh, model. It's equals to, we will come to that. Before you come to that, we can, how we train the model. Dot fit is the method that we use to train, to fit our model. And then from there, we can make the prediction. Uh, is equals to model dot predict. Then we can use our x underscore test. And guess what? Here we are. So the two methods that I wanted you to know is this one and this one. Then the other one is linear regression, but this one we'll use it just to define the model that we have here. Then we fit our model. And what do we use to fit our model? It is our x and our y, but they should be the train part of the data. And also this another one should be the train. Uh, we can run this. Train, 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 train. We didn't split our data, sorry. Oh God. Sorry, I misread that part. So. We come here. Uh, yeah, I wanted it to be here because you remember we had imported this test split. So we have to have our X train, our Y train, our X test and our Y test. So we have our X, X, Y, Y. Uh, we can equate it to train method underscore tests underscore split this is the method that we use for that case and then we have our x we have our y then we can define the the amount that you want to be left for testing we can give it to be something like 30 so that you can use 70 percent for training and then the random uh, underscore state. You can give it something like 42. Yeah, that works for us. But now here we have to underscore train. And we can have our X test here. Underscore train. We have our test here. But we can run it. We can learn it, we can learn it. Could not convert Toyota to string. Toyota to string. Why do we have Toyota anyway? You don't have the make. Could not convert with. Yeah, string to. Oh, 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 oh. Just to unsecured. Make model blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. 
This should be one. Trying to configure this. Yo. May you not? Okay. Sorry? Okay, you already did like just running all the way from the top because you're already working on an existing data set. Just talking about to say something, you know. If you're able to drop the make, we can just go with the numeric categories. So go to Shatwa the young. There is someone who is unmuted and there is, okay. Okay, seems like we have a missing value. Let come here where I was dropping some column. Let's check for missing value. Mm -hmm. Data. Uh, yeah. Uh, I might decide to input the values, but because of time, I just drop the column. Again, remember you have different ways of inputting missing values. You can do it if you want. Oh yeah. And then the last step is where you have to convert now this from string. It is it is considering the currency from string to yeah. So we have to work on this. So how do you do that? That is the last step that we have to work with. Before you build our model, I do the prediction. <coughs> Just a second. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to get example. But currency. Hold on. In a data frame. Okay, that is how we come and then we replace and then it works. Uh, it's simple, so you have to use str.replace, we remove the comma that is here. Then the other thing that you have to do is remove the dollar sign, we replace again, and then we cast it to us type float. So, yep, that's what you do. I just don't the code example here. And I have to do it somewhere like here. No, I have to do it somewhere like here. So it is data. 
So to the column is called, what is the name of the column that contains money? Uh, yeah, yeah. I want it to remain the same with the same name, and I want it to be the same. So let's see. No, this should be data guy. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, we are still here, I hope so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then we predict. You can see our model is working. So uh, it might be text like checking accuracy. You might try to check the accuracy of our model so that we, what is it called? We can check the accuracy of our model so that we can see which is performing better. And how do we do that? Anyone with the idea how to check the accuracy? I talked about it the other day. We might also be test like we can also want to check the what is it called again? Uh huh. Something else. Mean square data. So mean square data might help us to get the value. So just give me a one minute break uh you can just go through the code i'll just share it in the screen and type the question you should have Uh, hey, Harun, you're on mute. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, like you are on mute, uh, we couldn't hear you. But I said you're taking a minute, a uh, two minute break. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually I copied this. Uh, but again, for the purposes of solving problem, we can come to chat GPT and ask how to get accuracy. Okay, you are long? Oh, you are correct, sorry. Accuracy. Let's see. Mode. With examples, examples, boom, and now you'll get an example of the output here. So you first import, yep, 
Okay. Uh, accuracy score from matrix is right, but your import and uh, uppercase letter and then use the accuracy test X and Y to get the accuracy and then you print your accuracy. So where is it? Yeah, you can come here and try to Okay, I'm going to comment this out. I didn't want to get the output as it is. Yeah, I learned this and then after importing this, I can run it and then I can come to a model. A model is contradiction. A model is model. So you copy this part, accuracy dot, accuracy dot, X and Y tests. And remember how we used ours? Our X is, oh yeah, let's run it and see. Why predict is not defined because we use prediction. Uh, just to make sure. Uh, okay. Uh, classification okay i just want another method where we just write accuracy score from our model and then we get the results let's check this the last time yeah uh classification can't undo a mix oh yeah we have multi class and continuous targets okay so we just repeat it again and we get the results uh, otherwise, you use something else different. No, it's doing the same thing. Feed, train, predict, accuracy, and boom. So I will just use a different approach then to get it. I just want them to use the same place, and now the same place is not working for us. So you just come and import a blockchain escape. Okay, there is someone who is unmuted. Lola, please mute them. We can use mean square data method that is from the matrix in a scale and to get the accuracy. So I can just come here. Uh, okay, matrix, then I import mean. Uh, I can use mean. Absolute. Ella. And also the same thing, but now I use mean square dela in squared. This is more complex, so I didn't want to use it, but again, I think it will come in the, it will it will get in the program. Just give it something. Oh uh, yeah. Mm, from there, then we can just check the accuracy of our model. And how we do it. How we do it is this one. Uh, we can try to get the mean absolute L of our model as the first thing. Okay. And to get that, you use that more absolute here. Yeah. Then you use the Y test that we had defined, and then we use the prediction yeah. to get the mean absolute error. Then from that, we will just look for something else that is mean squared error. Mean squared error. And to get mean square data, okay, what have I done? Come here and introduce another code. Jesus. Okay, uh, I think I want to get a one can do. So it's the same, but we and Y tests and prediction. And I get the results. 
then I can introduce a new column and my instead of absolute is square dela. Dela, the same thing, and then I run. Okay. We have the result here, we have another one here. We have both the mean absolute error and we have the mean squared error. We can try to get our coefficients from our model. Then after getting our coefficient, we can be able to get the interceptor. Uh, and lastly, we can be able to get our score. And our R2, okay, just basically R2. Uh, underscore score would give us our score and that is given by y this prediction and then if you want to make it a date we multiply it by this if you want to make it percentage And since we didn't define it, we have to import it at the top where we're importing other packages. Uh, this is why I didn't want to introduce this here. Uh, where did I introduce metrics? And so from metrics, I want to import. Uh, okay. And then, okay, import, 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 import twice. Then I will learn more sales and say the output here at the bottom. Oh, I have shown you how to get mean squared data because you might be asked. You might also be asked to look for coefficients. Uh, yeah, you can see our model is 75% accurate. We can. Uh, get the Ladon forest and try to get the accuracy then we can just compare the two that was for the linear regression it was 75 uh this is how to get mean squared error this is how to get uh, mean absolute error and also you might want to get coefficient coefficient to use uh, okay this is what you do you say model because we are finding it as model dot coefficients uh yeah we get our coefficient for all the, the meaning for our data frame uh, for our model sorry then we can come to the last part of getting the interceptors uh please go because of time and try to look at what interceptors are we say model uh dot interceptor interceptors And so you'll get the interceptor. So yeah, here we are. So please try go and look at it. We have our first model that gives us 25% accuracy. Then we can go to our second and try to look at what would uh what can I can we Ladon Forest? We can use Ladon Forest and try to see the accuracy. Also, I had mentioned that we can use Lasso, you can also try to see what Lasso can give us. Okay, yeah. Uh, to implement random forest because you have split our data, it will be very simple. So you just come here and say uh, mount. Okay, you can call it mount. You just want them to delete this. Escape, BB. Escape. Then we come here and we get the, you can call it random forest regressor. And the model is equal to for okay, so this is the second model that you are using for this case, and we have to have, make sure that it is important at the top of the code here. So we come in from Scalan. Am I making a scale? Input 
from the cursor, but we are, we are getting it from linear models again. So, uh, dot sk dot linear uh, model. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. We have imported it in our file and we have made an object instance of it. Again, we do the, uh, the fit after fitting our model. We fit our model, then we uh, R F R underscore model dot fit. We fit it again with our x comma y and it is train and train. And then we can check, uh, we can make the print. Remember to change the variable name so that you don't get into LS. So for, for the first one I'd used prediction, this one I'm using pred. So model dot predict, and we are predicting using x underscore tests. Just confirming something here. Yeah. We run all the cells and try to look at the accuracy. Yeah, I won't go to the steps of looking for each. I'll just look for the accuracy. Uh, you can look for the accuracy. You can see also this other one gives us the uh, same accuracy. Uh, just making sure that you're not running the buffed code. Oh yeah, we are running the above code, so we should check, change this to predict the ones that you have predicted, sorry. Uh, okay, pred is not defined, why? Because this didn't, didn't execute, I don't forget. Fits, Jesus. Then we can check the accuracy. Yeah, you can see it gives us almost the same accuracy with the one that you end above. Actually, why is it giving us the same exact values? Okay, I used the regressor. I have predicted. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I think Radon Forest, because it's an ensemble, should give at least a high accuracy. So I don't understand why it hasn't given us. Okay, but I, I'm sure the mean uh, absolute error will change. Why is okay, 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 okay. Uh, to score y test underscore predict multiply by and to make it percentage. Okay, basically you have gotten the, the concept. Then the last part, we can implement the lasso. Uh, implementing the lasso is almost the same. So uh, you just import, you make sure that the, what is it called? Uh, the lasso, how do you define lasso? So you come here and refine the regression to be equals to linear. Linear underscore model. Okay, linear. Uh, I think because of time I might pause there, then I will implement it. So you just come look at this prediction. Uh, for this case, they are equal, but there is some parts where you get one model is giving us 90, the other is giving us 60. So you choose the one that is working, you save it, then you deploy it using some tools like uh, Flask. So basically, if there is no question, I'll just make sure that I've shared this with everyone, public. I copy the link. Open, then I save. Uh, confirm you can get the link. And again, I will share it in the chat. I'm leaving the platform up for questions.
and everything else that you want to work on. So I think what I'll do, I'll just leave this one here, then I'll go do the other one for the humidity. I'll also ask you to go and just do research on your own and try to come up with that problem. The first step is coming up with your own framework. Like if I'm given this is how I do things, phase one, phase two, phase two, three, phase four, and then I have my model, I pick up my model, I deploy it using Flask or Simulate or any dash, or even uh, Django or Fast API, anything that works for me, then how do you make sure that my code is working in my laptop? And even if my friends is using it, my code, they can work on their different operating system. And even in the server that you are deploying, if you, I'm using Windows and the server is a Linux server, let's say Ubuntu server, it will work comfortably. How do you ensure that? You ensure that by localizing your app and leaving you with one code of running one one script of of learn, learning your code that is here docker run and again if you use docker compose file you use docker compose uh, docker compose app when you have docker compose yaml file so yeah okay yeah any question, any input, anything, anything. Even if you wanted to like collect me, I'm open for it. Anything that you wanted to say. Uh, huh. Anyone has uh, school collabing for the project from the presentation by the lady from MMUST. MMUST, what is this? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will do that and post. Uh, Masi Demolido. Which lady was this? Anyway, I don't remember. Alex, unmute yourself and ask, please, so that you can help you. You can stop the recording. We are up. Hi. Uh, there was a lady who was taking a postgraduate program. And also, was also for the uh, at Masinde Moliro, if I'm not wrong. She had projects she probably should share to you and then you forward them to us. Oh, yeah. Uh, she is from Meru University, I think. Sorry. I, I would just ask it for, from her, then I will share. Okay. Hello. Uh, we have three more weeks to go. One week for learning, two weeks for preparing for interview. I'll share the work from Yvonne uh, by the end of the day. Any other question or we can end the call? It's 12. If there are more, no more questions, uh, Laula, you can end the call. Thank you, everyone. Uh, check the Slack channel for the slides and the, the presentation that she used. And also I've shared the link for today. You can just make your input. If you want to be added as a contributor, I can add you. And then you can polish the code for others. Uh, otherwise, thank you. Have a great day.